my name's uh, DJ Sniff, and uh, I'm a turntablist, and I work at Stime in Amsterdam. And um, yeah, I've been doing sort of experimental turntable work for about six or seven years. I've been a DJ much longer. And uh, my work always involves technology and always involves uh, building my own tools, whether it's in software or hardware. And um, that's been a very important aspect of my work because my playing has really involved with the tools that I build. And I've been trying to define sort of a practice based on the fact that I'm using unconventional tools and trying to find um, a unique sort of expression through that. <laughs> You want to walk us through what your rig is here? Yeah, so uh, basically, m my setup is always uh, one turntable, and then a DJ mixer, and then I have electronics connected to it. And the basic is that my crossfader is um, every time it moves, it sends out a signal whether the crossfader is open or it's closed. Hmm. And that's just a simple pulse that this mixer sends out. So, are, are you using the crossfader at all, or are you just using it as a MIDI controller? I'm using the crossfader as it is. It's just okay. that uh, it tells me, it tells the computer when it's open and it's closed. Okay. And I read that into the sound card um, as a signal. And in Max on my computer, I just see when it's open and closed. And I just map that to the sample start and stop. Um, so. Um, <laughs> So that's all it does. So, so if there's no sound, there's it just samples nothing, and uh, th that's all it pretty much is. Um, but then I have with this Novation controller over there, I could tell it uh, which sample bank to record it into. So I have four of them. So that's number two, number three. So it's one, two, and three. One, two, and three, and four. So you can switch between sample banks using the different buttons. Sort of, but the samples okay. always play in sequence. Uh, um, okay. So I don't have that much control, but I could tell it how many sample banks it's playing back. 
Right. So if it's just one, that's two, that's three, that's four. So. And then so it's always just playing in sequence. And then I have some automation stuff that I could give it more variety on how it plays back. And so that's what's on this controller here. This is your own creation yeah. here. This is a handmade controller. So that knob just changed the randomness of which, which sequence it plays in. So if it's at zero, it always plays the same sequence. And then the more I turn it, the more variation it gives it. Um, pitch shifting. Another, another pitch shifting. So that's like the, the center of all this performance is this uh, cross fader trigger sampler. And then from there, I've sort of learned how to play it because it's a really like rigid, simple system. So I actually have to learn how to play it more interestingly because mm -hmm. the loops are just really simple. And then I have different samplers to add layers to it. So the foot pedal that's connected to my controller can sample just longer phrases. So. controller as it got older the wires got loose and then it started adding noise to um, to the signal so when I hit this button it starts glitching. and this is a feature that I just decided to leave on because uh, rather than fixing the circuit I thought it was just a nice feature that it would just add this uh, random electricity noise Yeah, it's a um, PIC 18F uh, microcontroller, and um, it's a pretty basic circuit of just uh, converting analog and digital signals into um, USB HID. Okay. And um, yeah, it's lasted for about six years now, so it's pretty good. And for it's improving with age. <laughs> it is. Glitches it's and things. it's yeah. adding this uh, flavor. It's, it's right. aging well. Um, and so everything, everything that happens is sort of, I, played, I do a lot of quick stuff, but then I wanted to add layers and more droney stuff. So that's why I added this guy, um, which is essentially, let's see if it works. It's just another sampler. Um, it has, has four channels, and then it has some pitch shift. Essentially, I've been kind of building modules of samples that samplers that I could control with um, my playing of the turntable, and a lot of it's about being quick and being flexible, being able to respond with other improvisers. Right. And, um, yeah, that's right. it. Cool. 
and then underneath is the Mac. Yeah. Mini. So this I, is a, yeah. So this is something I started using maybe last year. Because when I was performing, I, I never had my laptop open. It was always just a crack open, and I never looked at the screen. And it just seemed kind of silly to have a laptop there. Uh, so I decided to write all my patches uh, on my laptop and then just um, install them on the Mac Mini. And it just starts up on an Apple script and it starts up the program. And uh, the idea was to have it plug and play and also to separate my life computer from my music computer. Right. Which is something that I was always wary about when because I'd be updating my life computer or adding software, always fixing it around, but I didn't want that same sort of uh, flexibility with my music computer. I wanted my music computer just to do the same thing always when I show up to gigs. Yeah, absolutely. So that's been a bit, that's big, uh, been a big uh, change, actually. Uh, more, more mentally, um, but also in the performance. It just seems a bit more concise and then more able to focus on sort of an instrumental setup than having this external object kind right. of just sitting on the side. So in other words, it's not just how it looks, it, it feels different. Now it feels different, this. definitely, yeah. 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 So we have vinyl in a digital system, but lest anyone think that we're using digital vinyl, if I turn around over here, there's lots and lots of records. So you're still using All real that. records. I mean, now you're, how, how many records do you take to a gig? Because you're, you're kind of slicing them up so much. I can imagine that I mean, you can almost have one and, and, and only could. use that, right? I could. I mean, I, I take about 30 records with me. Okay. Um, I've, ha I've thought many times of um, printing my own vinyl with all my sources. What's holding me back is that it loses a bit of the challenge if I know where everything is. And I do, what keeps it interesting for me is kind of the struggle on stage mm. or, you know, sort of trying to deal with the moment. And you know, looking for the records and also writing software that deals with the dead time while I'm looking for records has been a big part of this design. So I'm a little bit reluctant to print my own records, hmm. but I do, I, I dig for records, I look for different sources of records, I go on the internet, buy rare records, and they completely get thrashed and destroyed, um, but it's, it's part of my instrument and it's part of my practice, so I still buy records. Um, although I'm not denying all, any of the digital DJing stuff, I think it's really great. And, you know, I do have a tractor system, which I, when I do, yeah, when I do regular DJing, when I play just music to dance to or for different occasions, I prefer the digital um, vinyl just because it's easier. It's also, I think the, a lot of the data inspires you to do different kind of mixing or find relationships. Hmm. So. You know, seeing tempos that you know you didn't think were close by or that double up, I, I think a lot of those softwares could could use a bit more of the MIR um, music information retrieval kind of stuff of showing relationships out of your whole collection of uh, music. So I think that inspires a different way of finding songs and playing them. So that's the, that's another direction that I would like to pursue. But so far, right now, my main thing is playing this kind of experimental turntablism.